Hi everybody, welcome back to this week's video. Today we're gonna continue our series talking about everyday foods that you may be rethinking and making some simple swaps to go on a little bit more of a whole food, plant-based way of eating. So today we're talking about plant milks, okay? If you hung out with me last month, you know we did a whole video on the dangers of dairy. And um, if you haven't seen that video yet, I encourage you to check that out and then come back and watch this video. So if you're not using cow's milk anymore, you may still be drinking cereal, drinking cereal, eating cereal in the morning. I know my kids do. It's one of our favorite breakfasts. And um, we need something to put on it, right? And same thing with oatmeal. I usually like to have a little bit of milk in my oatmeal. So we want to know how to choose a healthy plant-based milk because there are so many options. Have you felt overwhelmed when you walk into that dairy case or kind of next to the dairy case where all the plant milks are? There's more and more coming out every month, it seems like, which is awesome and a wonderful problem to have, but I know it can be overwhelming. So I'm gonna walk you through it a little bit today, how you can choose a healthy plant milk. If this is your first time seeing these videos, welcome. My name is Danielle. I am a National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach, and I'm a plant-based nutrition educator. So I do these videos every single week inside my YouTube channel and my private Facebook group under the same name, Healthy Living with Danielle Dinkelman. If you're not already following me in one of those places, I would love for you to come over and join me there. You can also find me and follow me on Instagram at dd.healthcoach. All right, so let's talk plant milks. Um, like I said, if you've been feeling overwhelmed by this, I really wanna help make this a little easier for you and help you feel confident that you can choose a healthy plant milk for yourself and your family, okay? Now, we talked about this in our peanut butter video, right? That when we look at food products, um, the label that you're gonna see is what its job is to make you feel good about buying the product, right? It's to pull you in, it's to comfort you and encourage you, and it's gonna use some buzzwords, okay? So be aware of that, but we are educated consumers, so we always pick up things off of the shelf and we flip it over and we are looking for the ingredients list, okay? So number one, I'm gonna show you what we're looking for and trying to avoid in our ingredients list. Um, I'm gonna tell you, you know, there's different labels here of, you know, do we get the vanilla, the vanilla flavor, or the unsweetened original, what's the difference between those? We're gonna hash all that out today. And then I'm gonna share with you a couple brands that I've bought for my own family. And then what about the difference between like almond, soy, cashew, like are there benefits, are there pros and cons there? So we'll dive into that a little bit too. And then I'll share with you a little bit about my own experience of kind of switching my family over from cow's milk to plant milks, because I know that can be a big barrier too. So let's get started. In the ingredients list, what we're looking for is, again, we want as few ingredients as possible, right? Usually five or less if we can. Um, and we're looking for no, we want no oil, we want no sugar, okay? That's, that's kind of the gold standard, that's, that's optimal, okay? Now, a word real quick, is this a whole food? No, it is not a whole food. This is a processed food. Um, it's a plant-based food, but it is slightly processed, right? So for example, you can always tell a processed food by looking at the fiber, right? Because remember in last week's video, I, I taught you every whole plant food has fiber. So processed by definition is something when we're taking a whole food and we're stripping parts away and we're adding things back in as well. Okay, so dietary fiber, I'm looking here under the nutrition facts, less than a gram per serving. So this is not a whole food, don't consider this a health food, it is a healthier alternative to cow's milk, okay? So it's not like I'm coming home after school and like drinking a glass of this or encouraging my kids to do that. Um, this is just a vehicle that helps me have those other things I was talking about, like cereal and oatmeal. And we also use this like in recipes when we're making pancakes and stuff. These, this is the dairy-free alternative, okay? So quick word about that. This is a processed food, okay? All right, so we can do our best with it though <clears throat> by looking for no sugar, no oil. So ingredients on this one um, is almond milk, which is filtered water and almonds, okay? Now, of course, this has been almonds that have been strained, which is why there's not there's no bulk here, there's no fiber, right? Um, and then it does have a vitamin and mineral blend. Um, one, two, three, four, five vitamins that have been added in. So we've got the almond, uh, the almond and water, 
and then the vitamins. Okay, so we're at three. It does have some sea salt, and then it has um, locust bean gum, gel and gum, and then ascorbic acid um, and natural flavor. Okay, so again, this is a processed food. So overall, I'm seeing mostly this is filtered water and almonds. And yes, it has some added vitamins, eh, pretty negligible, a little bit of salt, negligible. Locust bean gum and gel and gum, um, you can research this a little bit, but basically these, when you see these gums, that is a stabilizer or a thickener, and it's actually been shown to be totally safe. Now there is, we're gonna get into some other, th other thickeners that have been shown to potentially not be safe, and we'll talk about that, but there's nothing wrong with either of those. So again, when you see stuff on ingredients labels, go do some research, okay? Um, Dr. Greger, uh, his website, nutritionfacts.org, fantastic resource, you can research things there. Okay, um, ascorbic acid and natural flavor. Of course, in the whole foods world, um, we do try to stay away from those things typically, but if you found that you don't have any sensitivities and you're not too stressed out about that, then I say go on ahead. Again, this is a food product that we're not using a ton of, it's just a little bit, so it's really up to you, right? Now, ideally, you could make your own almond milk, right? You can do that, and then you have complete control over everything that's in there. If that's not realistic for you, then I'm showing you how to make the best choice we can that is realistic, okay? So, guess what? This has no oil and it has no sweetener, okay? So it passes that test, which is fantastic. Okay, so let me talk to you real quick about one thing that I do want you to watch out for when you're reading through these ingredients lists. And some brands are more known for this to have this ingredient than others um, is uh, carrageenan. Okay, so that is a thickener and it has been shown to potentially be harmful and um, potential has potential links to leaky gut. Um, so be aware of that, do your research, and then really it's just kind of a good call to choose one and it's easy to find a plant milk that does not have the carrageenan in it, okay? So that is one thing to look out for. Um, yeah, so watch out for that. I'll tell you right now, I'm pretty sure the Almond Breeze brand does have the carrageenan in it last time I checked. So just flip it over, check that ingredients label. Okay, um, what about all these different types? You know, they, they will, you'll see, you'll notice different categories that the different milks will have. It'll say original or it'll say vanilla or this one will say unsweetened. Um, so original is going to have sugar in it. Um, vanilla is going to have sugar in it. Obviously the unsweetened is not, okay? Um, I'm actually also really happy with this brand. Um, I didn't even realize that this one does not have any lecithin. Um, did I say that right? Lecithin, <laughs> it might be backwards. Um, but that is a form of oil. So be aware of that. Some of, some of these brands will have that. So that's nice that this happens to be the Silk brand. It does not have any oils in there, okay? Let's see, um, how do you choose which type of milk, right? It's all coming from different things. Cashews, hemp seed, flax, oat, almond, soy. How do you navigate that? Um, I'm here to tell you, really health-wise, the only one that I would maybe stay away from is coconut. Um, uh, I just wouldn't be putting that on my cereal every single day. Um, I do cook with coconut milk in some curry recipes and things like that. Um, and when I'm making really sweet treats, like if I'm making like a pie for Thanksgiving and I'm making my own whipped cream, sometimes I will use full fat coconut milk, but that's usually in the can. Um, coconut is one of the few plant kingdom foods that actually does have saturated fat in it. So it's just not something we wanna be having every day. Um, now, it is higher in fat, so you know you can just kind of compare and contrast and make those decisions for yourself. But personally, I gravitate to the almond milk or the soy milk. Those tend to be the most affordable. Um, the more exotic ones like cashew and hemp and those sorts of things seem to be a little bit more spendy, and I'm just budget aware, I guess. Um, but really, um, again, soy is not problematic. Um, if you watched my tofu video that I did a few weeks ago, um, you'll understand that soy is not a problem. In fact, it can actually be beneficial, especially if you are um, staving off or recovering from breast cancer. So take a look at that video if you haven't seen it. Um, I think that covers it, okay? So feel free, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. But um, for my family, um, when we switched to plant milk, um, 
I there's a couple things that I did and maybe this is maybe this is for another video someday but I, I do encourage you to have a conversation with your family and let them know that you are lovingly putting your foot down and owning your role as the gatekeeper of the food in your home and you're gonna choose to not buy cow's milk anymore it, it won't be available and you can do that however feels correct for you um, I think it's totally reasonable to say to, to let your family adjust by saying okay see what milk is in the fridge right now that cow's milk um, we're not gonna be buying that anymore once that is gone okay and then take them with you if you want get them involved in the process buy a few different ones to, to test out and just do some experimenting find a flavor that people can live with now a word about transitioning um, I, I did say that it's ideal to get the kind of milk that doesn't have added sugar or flavors to it right However, if you are going from cow's milk to a plain unsweetened almond milk, your kids are gonna notice a big difference because um, dairy milk is naturally and artificially very, very sweet, right? So it may be okay and it may be actually um, op uh, optimal to go ahead and let your family switch from dairy milk to a sweetened or flavored milk, so like that original or that vanilla and then move them over eventually to an unsweetened version. You can wean them off of it in that way if you feel you need to, okay? So hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, again, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what support you need on this topic. I know it can be a little overwhelming and confusing, but it's really one of those things that we just need to do our best to educate ourselves as best we can, and then we just make the best decisions we can. And you're not always gonna have a black and white answer, and that's okay, right? So we can just follow our own gut and our intuition and we can make some judgment calls for ourselves and for our family. So, all right, um, feel free to come on over to YouTube or to Facebook, find our channel or our free Facebook group called Healthy Living with Danielle Dinkelman and check me out on Instagram. I'd love to hang out with you and hear from you if there's anything else you need support or information on. Take care.